How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night, October 8th, 2024. It's about 10.15 p.m. here. California time. Latest activity on the globe shows a 1.4 here across the area of Southern California. Looks like just around the uh, San Bernardino Mountains area. As uh, far as anything major going on out here across the West Coast, uh, we got some movement out into Nevada. Also, uh, a little earthquake outside of the uh, Yosemite Valley area earlier uh, this afternoon. Aside from that, generally small microquake activity out here uh, in various areas around Malibu. It looks like we got some further movement here uh, throughout the day and also throughout the uh, Chino area and the Fontana region where we've been seeing a little bit of earthquake swarming take place. Uh, but aside from that, really no major earthquake swarm, no major unusual activity uh, to note across Southern California for now. Uh, there's our four-pointer off the coast of Northern Cal. Nothing else showing up out here. Uh, and movement through the uh, Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet with a handful of smaller quakes there across the uh, volcanoes. And by the way, they did add a seismograph station here. Looks like in the area of Mount Adams. Uh, this has been one area that... Uh, um, They've seen a little bit of earthquake activity here recently, and they only had one seismograph station, so it looks like they added another one in here. Uh, of course, that's not going to pop up here on this one. But uh, this is going to be one of the Mount Adams seismograph stations there. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on there far as any unusual activity. But, uh, you know, a few earthquakes here recently. They decided to put in a few seismograph stations, or at least a, cu a couple seismograph stations there, I believe, on the southern flank of Mount Adams just to uh, continue monitoring. Not a whole lot going on for the uh, Cascadia for now. Let's go see what we got uh, across the uh, trimmer map here, <clears throat> which consists of about nine epicenters. Not a whole lot going on. Looks like things are starting to die down there across the area of the central coast of Oregon, where we've watched a uh, whole bunch of trimmer activity here in the last uh, month or so. Actually, it looks like it started on the 21st of last month for a, uh, let's see what we got for a total tally. About 4,827 epicenters there, mainly across the central portion here, central coast of Oregon. Uh, a little bit of activity extending down into Northern California as well. But uh, no major earthquake activity for now. A uh, five-pointer coming in there across the Aleutian Trench. This area definitely uh, seeing a little bit of uptick here today. This five-pointer occurring within the region of two uh, elevated earthquake events here in the last week. One to the left and one to the right here, right in between. So we got some surface adjustment going on here across the Aleutian Trench, but entirely entirety out here. We've seen things on the elevated side, so keep an eye here on the Aleutian Trench. Uh, looks like things could uh, still continue to be active out here in this area, but the latest quake right now, a five-pointer. Way up north here into the Brooks Range, got a little bit of crustal stress going on up here, it looks like. Very shallow earthquake activity. Twos and threes, nothing major going on up there for now. And a look at the worldwide activity, fairly minimal. Uh, with only a handful of smaller quakes out here in the four range today. The uh, Earthquake 3D globe shows that. Notice there's a lot of smaller quakes here missing on the globe. I'm still waiting on an update for the EMSC uh, servers here so I can add them back on the globe because they're not working. So for now, just got the USGS on here. So that will have to work for now. A little bit of swarming going on there across Puerto Rico, as you can see there on the map. So, or on the graph, let's go see what's going on over here. Right uh, underneath this, there. well, it's not too deep. Looks like about seven to nine miles below the surface here for some twos and threes. A little bit of uh, earthquake activity ramping up there. Of course, this region gets squeezed a lot here. It's got the Mariotos Trough and the Puerto Rico Trench up here, putting the squeeze on this. Uh, surface feature, Oceanic Crest, and of course the Puerto Rico area. They often see uh, quite a bit of earthquake swarms on occasion there. Been a little while, but it looks like we're starting to fill in slightly. Uh, aside from that, uh, as you can see here on the globe, just uh, looks like a typical day here on this planet. Uh, another X flare. This one, Earth directed, and it's still flaring. Look at this. 
beautiful feature here. Now, it's a good possibility here this thing did produce a CME. Looking at the chart here, this is a fair, fairly uh, lengthy X flare. There's our uh, X flare there from yesterday from a different sunspot. This one was off on the western limb. This sunspot directly facing the Earth, so anything that does pop off there uh, will be geo effective. And that is from, uh, that's from 3848. Let's see what we got here. I'm really surprised this thing produced a uh, X flare here. It looks like it was starting to decay here in the magnetic complexity, but um, looked like it had a little sleeve or a little trick up its sleeve there. So that is directly facing Earth. And um, we'll have to wait here, see if there was a CME that was produced. Um, good possibility that could kick back up the auroras here in a couple nights. The auroras right now not looking... Uh, super active well compared to last night uh, we've got minimal conditions up here across alaska canada greenland uh, greenland and iceland area as well uh that uh you know there's a possibility there's some uh, auroras kicking up there right now but again nothing like what we've seen last night kp index only up around the four range it looks like three to four range there on the charts and again we could get uh another cme here in a couple nights from the most recent X flare that popped off there. It's a pretty nice, uh, decent flare. And we've had a, a number of X flares here in the last couple weeks. Solar maximum, of course, is next year, around June 2025. So we will continue to see elevated flaring activity. You know, there's always a, a possibility we could get a, a really strong flare. So far, our top flare is going to be that X. 9.1 uh, here that popped off. Um, it's on the it's visible on the seven day here, right here. X nine point I believe it's nine point one five here the maximum, but that that's a pretty strong flare. In fact, that's the strongest flare of this solar cycle. If you look here on the top flares, uh, they have it as the X nine point oh back on the third of October here, so uh, a few days ago. These flares, they can get uh, much larger than this. So we'll keep an eye here on the sun as we advance towards solar maximum. We haven't even seen nothing yet. Uh, Aurora forecast here looks fairly minimal, uh, at least for the next couple nights until about the 11th. We'll have to watch here and see how they want to do the uh, um, the current CME. If there was one produced here, we'll check back on that. Getting a little bit of proton event activity as well from that recent X flare. As you can see, mainly affecting, this is not auroras, but this is uh, just protons affecting the uh, ionosphere up there uh, and also having a, a somewhat of a dramatic effect on uh, high frequency radio communi uh, communication systems and low frequency navigation systems at the polar regions there. All right, uh, hurricane activity. Goodness, we got a, uh, a big hurricane. A major hurricane here. We still have a uh, Milton inching closer here to the Florida coast. Tampa, a whole lot of evacuations going on out here across the west coast. This is supposed to remain rather strong across the entire area of Florida. Uh, it's going to weaken a little bit, but I think that may have a decent eye wall all the way across Florida. Uh, we'll have to watch that and see how it does. But uh, 160 mile per hour sustained winds, Category 5, moving off to the northeast at about 12 miles per hour. Check out this feature here. Look at this infrared image of Milton. No signs of strengthening. Uh, what I find as well, uh, interesting as well, is a little development up here. Now, that's a thunderstorm cluster that's uh, advancing towards the Florida area um, ahead of uh, Milton here. The convection bands here are lifting up moisture into this area. And uh, it's actually rather interesting here. I don't think this is gonna develop into any other type of tropical system here, but man, is it putting down a lot of rainfall. Uh, look at this satellite image here. As we zoom in a little bit closer here to the area, there's Milton well-defined eyewall there's all that thunderstorm activity out there ahead of Milton. That's just going to make things worse here. It's going to dump a whole bunch of rain, make everything all soaked out there, and then it's going to dump a whole bunch more rain from Milton once it uh, heads inland. 
But uh, that's a very interesting feature. I don't think, if anything, that's going to inhibit um, or weaken the hurricane. It's really not... Uh, I don't think it's going to affect it. If anything, it's just all these convection bands here. Uh, not only feeding the hurricane, but also ahead here. It's making its own little tropical system. A little little sister, a little brother, I guess, if you will, uh, ahead of this hurricane. Goodness. So we'll, we'll see what happens with this. It's uh, not going away. That's a, uh, a serious event that's about ready to take place here. The peak storm surge around the Tampa Bay area. Uh, 12 feet plus we're talking about around Tampa Bay 10 to 15 feet there in the purple folks that's uh, some serious deal there so a lot of evacuations going on I hope everyone's out of there by now because this is coming uh, it is expected uh, to hit the area late tomorrow let's see what we got here for arrival time now this is 10 p.m. Tuesday right now my time so um, it's going to be three hours ahead. So if we're talking about just offshore at 7 p.m., this is going to be 10 p.m. Um, Eastern time here tomorrow. So probably I'm guessing around maybe 11 or midnight local time there. Uh, the brunt of it should be hitting the Tampa area. Pretty big deal, folks. So hopefully everyone stays safe out there and uh, gets out of the region. The course storm chasers... Uh, setting up down there i don't know I'm not for sure if i'd want to do something like that i don't mind thunderstorm watching but uh a big old hurricane that's a different story and lowland um waters out here the storm surge can definitely make a uh life not so fun if you get trapped in that all right uh, let's see what else we got here folks i think that's about it for now just going to call it keep it short uh earthquake activity Again, not uh, seeing anything major going on out here. One more earthquake since we've been chatting. Uh, actually, no, it looks like that one's there, but maybe they added a secondary earthquake in there. A little bit of movement here across the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment, with one earthquake uh, right on it. So uh, we'll continue to watch it here, folks, and see how this plays out. Somewhat quiet, though. Hopefully not too quiet. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Wednesday morning update, folks. Make sure you guys subscribe while you're here. Uh, and, of course, welcome all the new viewers out here. Have a good night. We'll see you guys uh, in the morning sometime.